Hi guys, I hope you can hear me. Um, let's start with my presentation. Uh, actually, Carol introduced uh, already uh, a concept that I will uh, talk um, quite uh, widely uh, during my talk, that is about uh, language models. And in particular, I will show how we use language models in Allegro. And you will see that we can build really uh, interesting applications if we base uh, on this. So let's start. And yes, even if Carol already uh, introduced you to the concept of uh, language model, I just want to repeat uh, basically what we mean by language modeling. So if we have to give a definition of uh, language modeling, this is the task of predicting what will come next given some context. So for example, here we have a, uh, an example, Allegro is A and a language model uh, will build uh, a, a probability distribution uh, that will uh, basically allow you to pick the most probable word uh, that could fill the gap here. So a system that does this is called language model. It's as simple as that. And we can think that we use uh, language models basically every day because uh, uh, just think, for example, of uh, the text autocompletion systems that uh, are running when you are Googling for something in the Google search bar or uh, the text autocorrection systems that are helping you to write uh, correctly in some chat application that you use every day. But also I could say that language models uh, are even more popular or unpopular nowadays, depending on how you see it, because uh, uh, these models, these neural networks became so powerful that they are able to automatically generate text data. It's, it's famous the case of the GPT-3 model released uh, last year by OpenAI. Uh, it, this model was like uh, involved in some uh, uh, news uh, related to, for example, fake news generation or uh, fake blog post generation. And I think um, um, it's really important uh, to understand that these models have some theoretical foundations. And if we want to understand how it's possible to build such powerful language models that are able to do such uh, things, uh, we need to actually uh, take a step back in, in the literature and in the, in the past. And actually the talk of, uh, of today will be focused on uh, a paper that was released uh, in 2019 and that it's entitled BERT, uh, Pre-Training of Deep Bidirectional Transformers for Language Understanding. And you will see that basically uh, this uh, is the foundation that uh, allow us to build uh, such powerful language models like the one of GPT-3. So uh, let's start with this. So uh, what, what the authors of this paper um, realize is basically the following. They uh, changed the language modeling uh, framework problem, basically um, adding one concept. So imagine that we have a, a sentence like the one that you can see here. And the authors here uh, said, so imagine that we randomly mask some uh, words in this sentence and and we can think that if we pass such a, a mask uh, sequence to a, a big neural network that we call BERT in this slide, um, and we ask the neural network to try to predict uh, what, what is the missing uh, word or the missing token. Um, and if we repeat this for millions of, of examples, at the, end of, at the end of the day, we will have a neural network that basically understood somehow the language. And, um, and most importantly, uh, this network uh, will be uh, something that in the machine learning community we call encoder. So it will be something that basically encodes a given sentence or a given word into some type of representation. That is something that already Carol uh, um, gave uh, a, a glimpse of what we mean uh, by representation. But just to fix in your mind what we mean by this, uh, I have prepared this slide. So basically you can think that if this neural network show a corpus of millions of examples, at the end of the day, the neural network somehow will learn the properties uh, that are um, specific of the language that we are trying to fit. So basically similar words will be mapped by the neural network into a space of vectors uh, where these similar words are also similar vectors. And this is really important uh, uh, to achieve. And also because these em embeddings, uh, the, these word embeddings, are uh, really useful for many other machine learning algorithms. Uh, in fact, in this in this talk, I will show you how basically um, modern uh, NLP systems basically are split into two um, 
in two into two stages. One first stage is called the pre-training of the language model. So basically, imagine that you want to build a um, sentiment analysis application for your company. And you could uh, try to achieve this in the standard machine learning way. Uh, or you could follow the BERT framework. That is to say, uh, we can pre-train a language model using millions of product reviews, for example, if you are talking about an e-commerce. So at the end of the day, uh, you will have a really powerful encoder that will have understood something of your reviews. And then you can basically fine tune this encoder for the sentiment analysis, analysis application and in such a way that basically you will reshape these representations um, for, for coming from the masked language model to solve uh, the sentiment uh, analysis uh, classification problem. And so after this, uh, I can may ask you a question. Does it make sense to basically fit uh, a language model onto Allegro offers data? So the answer is yes, because uh, basically we understood that uh, having an encoder that has learned some representation of words occurring on a, a Polish e-commerce platform will help us in many ways. But here I'm underlining the fact that we are talking about Polish e-commerce because uh, you know, uh, here we are talking about um, non-natural language because uh, if we take the language spoken in Allegro, this is something non-natural, but still it's Polish. Uh, we could say that it's like a poorer version in terms of voc vocabulary, but really rich in domain-specific words. And we have a lot of such data, so uh, this is really handy because um, we know that to train successfully such la language models, we need a lot of examples. And also we have a lot of uh, uh, possible applications that where we could use this representation learned from the Allegro language model. So basically we know that it really makes sense to do it. And now let's see how we can do it practically. And first question is, uh, do we really need to implement BERT and all this stuff from by, by our own? And the answer, fortunately, is no, because uh, um, actually Carol already showed you some uh, code snippets using transformers library that is basically uh, the most uh, used library nowadays. nowadays. And um, in this library, basically, you can find uh, a lot of uh, already implemented classes to solve many NLP tasks, like language modeling training. And in particular, also uh, the um, this uh, library is backended by the most popular deep learning frameworks. For example, Pytorch, that is the one that we use in Allegro. And so throughout the next slides, uh, we will see a lot of uh, code snippets uh, taken from transformers because I want to show you how we basically we can uh, build a language model with really few lines of code. Uh, so let's start and let's see together what are the building blocks of training a language model. So first of all, as you understood, um, we need a training corpus. Uh, that is to say a big set of sentences. But I will tell you later uh, something about these sentences because uh, you can already imagine that it's important to fix uh, beforehand what we mean by sentence if we are trying to fit a non-natural language model like Allegro uh, language. So uh, when we have such training corpus, we can proceed uh, training at tokenizers. That is uh, this piece of um, algorithm that basically um, will translate uh, strings into tokens uh, that are, token is another way of saying uh, uh, um, unique integer IDs. So um, when we have uh, the tokenizer trained and the training corpus, we can proceed for the masked language model training. And what we need here, we need two basically pieces. Uh, we need to code this uh, masking logic uh, that is really simple. Like uh, we need to basically randomly mask uh, some integers of the sequence um, uh, and do it uh, in an um, efficient way. And this will be the input for a neural network uh, that has some architecture. Uh, in our case, we will use BERT architecture that is uh, based on transformers architecture. And, and yes, and when we have this, we can launch a standard um, training procedure for any neural network. And at the end of the day, uh, we will have a unlanguage model. So let's now dive into each of these steps. Uh, starting from the training corpus, uh, as I told you, it's really important to fix uh, the textual representation of uh, the offer in our case. 
So uh, if you think about uh, Allegro as uh, an e-commerce, you can think that basically, uh, to my mind, uh, it comes to uh, approaches to represent a sentence. For example, a sentence could be the concatenation of offers name, attributes, and category. Here, uh, we don't need to really respect the syntax uh, of the of the entity that is the offer. Um, but if someone we will think that maybe it's too much to like um, concatenate brutally such a piece of text, it could be that another option could be like, uh, okay, let's take the offers description written by the seller as an input. But maybe here we, we should uh, deal with more noise, for example, because uh, such a uh, uh, description is written by the seller and maybe there are also some information not related to the offer. So it's really a trade-off. But depending on uh, your choice, um, at the end of the day, uh, Hugging Face Transformer library just um, require you to have basically a huge TXT file or several TXT files that will contain uh, sentences uh, divided uh, um, by new lines. So it's really simple to build uh, such a corpus. Then when we have this, we can proceed uh, with the tokenization. And just to remind you, basically we want to go from here, so a string sentence, into a sequence of numbers. There are many ways of doing it. Um, this talk is not uh, focused on tokenization. In general, I will tell you that uh, in the talk uh, I will use, um, I will show you how to uh, use uh, through transformers library byte pair encoding uh, tokenization that is the most uh, used nowadays. And in general. Um, I will show you that basically, uh, even if uh, uh, it's important to know the theory behind this algorithm, in transformers, you don't need to, to know it too much because as I can show you now, it's really simple to basically build such, to such tokenizer because, so um, here we are, we are importing from a tokenizers library that is a library that is coming along with transformers uh, when you are installing it. And how to define a tokenizer? So basically, you just uh, instantiate an um, uh, instance from the tokenizer class, specifying that you want the BP algorithm to, to be used. Then you specify something that we, is called tokenizer trainer uh, that will basically run the BP algorithm for you. And here I'm pointing out that uh, we are specifying an important parameter that is the vocabulary size. Um, this is an important parameter that, uh, and there is no Unfortunately, any um, like uh, um, specified or unique uh, way of defining this uh, this number because it really depends on the diversity of the language that you are trying to fit. But I can tell you that if your goal is to do something similar to what we are doing now, so fitting an Allegro language, an e-commerce language, this number it's kind of uh, reasonable. So um, um, it's okay to fix as thirteen thousand thousands uh, the vocabulary size. Okay, uh, then you basically uh, specify the, the, the path to the corpus that can be uh, one unique big TXT file or several of them. You launch tokenizer.train onto the, those files and here you go. You, you have the tokenizer trained and uh, you will save it uh, into some output directory. How to use it later? So the uh, resulting file will be a unique JSON that basically encode uh, the tokenizer itself, uh, the vocabulary and all other parameters that were defined. Um, this uh, JSON will be loaded through the through a um, specific uh, class imported by transformers. And then the usage is really simple because basically you can pass a string or a list of strings. And yeah, because the tokenizer can also work with batches, uh, so multiple strings uh, uh, fed at the same time to the tokenizer. And we get the uh, the output that is a, a sequence of numbers as, as we want. Yeah, so basically uh, we have talked about the tokenization and now we proceed in the pipeline. And I re just remind you that basically now uh, we have a corpus that we need to read efficiently. Then for each sentence that is read through from the corpus, we need to apply tokenization and masking, and we will feed such mask sequence to a model. Um, so we, we miss basically a data loading procedure and a model. So let's, starting from the model, uh, again, with transformers is so easy because uh, we basically, um, we, it, 
it, it boils down to um, select uh, one possible um, uh, model, uh, a possible neural network architecture that is available uh, from the Hugging Face uh, Models Hub. We specify some configuration file um, that is really easy to understand if you look at the documentation uh, and if you are, are a little bit into the topic. And basically, with this config, we initialize a model uh, with the su suffix uh, for masked language model. Because uh, uh, if you remember, I told you that in transformers, we can select uh, uh, classes that are uh, suitable for solving some specific uh, NLP task. And in this case, we want to solve uh, the masked language model. So uh, this um, uh, this class, BERT for masked language model, basically will uh, uh, import successfully this BERT config, but also will add some details uh, that uh, allow you to basically train successfully a language model. So we have the model. And let's go through the data loader. Um, so uh, you can already see here that uh, there is a kind of uh, huge uh, function on the right, and I'm not going to read line by line, because actually I just wanted to um, to tell you that we prepared for you a repository, repository uh, sorry, repository that we that you could use. Um, all the code that I'm showing is there in this publicly available repository, where basically we prepared for you a toy example that is not using Allegro data, but is using Amazon public uh, data to solve uh, basically the same thing that we are going to do here. So fitting a language model onto e-commerce data. So um, what we want to achieve here, uh, just uh, to, to repeat myself again, we want to basically uh, apply this masking logic. So we want to randomly mask some of the tokens that are coming uh, from the encoded batch of uh, strings. Uh, in the, there are many ways of doing it. Uh, the BERT paper suggests to simply mask out 15% of the tokens uh, on the given sentence. So uh, with the function that I'm providing here, you are achieving this in a really simple and straightforward way. And yeah, so we have this function. And then we can proceed in, um, in the data loading um, pipeline. So basically, um, we have this big corpus that we need uh, to read the uh, line by line. And, and what we, we can do is like uh, um, encapsulate uh, the, uh, the data set itself into um, a function that torch the, our preferred uh, um, deep learning framework uh, provided that, that is a uh, torch utils uh, uh, data set. Basically, this is a really nice abstraction of what is a data set. Uh, you basically need to uh, provide uh, an init function. So in our cases, we are just open the, opening the file and reading it line by line. And then we provide the utils function, like what is the length of the corpus or how to get an item out from it. And this data set is passed to another um, uh, class that is provided by Torch Utils, that is data loader. That is basically another class written by the Torch uh, um, engineers that will take care of uh, efficiently loading uh, examples from your data set. Uh, and it will, it will apply online and efficiently this uh, function that we coded uh, before in the previous slide, this tokenized max batch, batch. And here, here we go, because basically uh, these are the missing parts to allow us to go for the training procedure that is here. Here I'm, uh, I wrote for you a really simple torch code uh, that is basically uh, the way you will train on a, a, any neural network, basically, uh, if using torch. And I'm, I guess that many of you are already familiar with it, but I, I will go through um, really uh, smoothly. But in general, I remind you that Again, all this code is available in the, rep the repository that was linked uh, right now. And by the way, so uh, here we need to basically uh, initialize an optimizer that is an um, object that will take care of optimizing the parameters of our neural network. We go through this data loader uh, for a number of steps that we, um, uh, that in this case basically will uh, will equal to uh, a thought, um and one epoch, that is to say, we will see all possible sentences at least one time. And uh, when uh, uh, batching from the data loader, we will get the uh, 
the vectors that are needed for uh, for the, the the model itself so we are giving an input to our neural network uh, so we are doing the forward pass and that's how we call it and from uh, the outputs that we get from the neural network we actually extract two quantities that we we are going to monitor throughout the training procedure that are that are respectively uh, mlm loss that stands for masked language med modeling loss that basically it's a quantity that uh, tell us uh, how much errors uh, the neural network is uh, is making so um, we expect that this quantity goes down along the training while the second quantity uh, the uh, mlm accuracy is uh, reflecting how accurate are our predictions so how accurate we are predicting the missing token um yeah, so basically uh, we can train the neural network and we will save the weights of this neural network because uh, remember that we want to use this language model uh, later for for something, uh, for um, downstream task, for example. So uh, I've launched this experiment uh, before the, the talk and it actually looks that our language model was training uh, well because the loss was going down and the accuracy was going up throughout the steps. So it looks like that it's OK. But the final uh, um, check, I will say that it's uh, this. Uh, so basically, we can query the model trying to uh, and asking the model, what is the missing token if I provide you this query? And these are some cherry picks uh, um, examples that I uh, that I picked for you. And basically, we can, we can see that the model uh, understood uh, the e-commerce language somehow, uh, because for example, if we provide t-shirt stun, uh, we have, uh, for example, Nove, Ujivane, or Idealne as first uh, three candidate tokens. But also for me, it's interesting, uh, for example, the third uh, example, because we see that the language model understood that between spray and milliliters, a number should fit. So uh, it understood that basically, um, this is something typical of e-commerce, e right? So, uh, we we are sure that things are working somehow and just to finish the talk i want to show you how basically we can now take this language model and we can fine tune it for uh, for us solving a task so if you recall this uh, graph this uh, this image uh, we did basically the, the part on the left so we trained a, um, a language model using a lot of uh, offers data coming from allegro so now uh, we can ask ourselves, what about uh, uh, making a category classification uh, uh, task? So basically, given, for example, an offer title, we want to predict uh, what is the category of such offer. And we are going to use this schema. So uh, we are going to basically fine tune uh, the representation and the weights of the language model to make it uh, uh, to, to make it become not only a language model, but a category classifier. Cl classifier. How can we do it? So uh, first of all, we need to get a data set for doing this. And in this case, it's really straightforward because basically we need, we have a lot of historical data where we have offers title on one side that will be the input for the, this category classifier. And we have the label category uh, on the right side. And as any other standard machine learning procedure, we will split this uh, into training and validation to check uh, the scores. And now a little bit of uh, code. So uh, in general, how can you define a new neural network that will use both the language model and uh, will take uh, and will solve a different objective that is the category classification? So basically, um, you need to basically define a neural network that is composed by two pieces. Uh, using transformers library, we can uh, initialize, basically load into memory the uh, neural net, the language model that we already trained. So basically, looking at the image on the right, uh, we are adding the green uh, part. So we are adding something that we call uh, uh, the BERT back backbone or the language model backbone. But since we need to solve a category classification problem, we need to add uh, another piece uh, to this neural network that is uh, uh, an output layer where basically uh, we will uh, uh, have uh, one neuron for each of the categories that we want to predict. And that's it. Um, then we can fork such a neural network to the standard torch uh, training procedure and we, we train our neural network again. 
So again, here it looks okay. I <laughs> trained it uh, before and uh, this is a neural network and we reach really optimal accuracy on the validation set. And that's it. So question, how can, can we use such a category classifier into production? So imagine if we have uh, an offers title, like uh, this one that you can see, we will have the pre-trained tokenizer uh, as first block that will uh, map uh, the sentence into uh, tokens. Then we will uh, input this uh, entity to uh, the category classifier neural network that we just built. And we will have uh, basically a neural network that is predicting a probability for each of the categories that we add. And what to show to the client is obviously the most probable uh, uh, category. So we are going to pick the uh, the highest number from the, the output. And this will be our uh, predicted category. And that's it. So uh, just to summarize and conclude the, the talk, uh, what we have learned. So I hope I gave you a little bit of uh, intuition of what is the what are the foundation of modern language modeling uh, that is uh, done with BERT-like frameworks. Also, we learned that using this Hugging Face Transformers Python library is uh, basically straightforward and any engineer uh, can do it. Um, such uh, can build such pipeline. Also, we show that uh, basically we can successfully train a language model onto some domain specific data. In, in our case, it was uh, Allegro offers. And having this uh, learned and trained, we can use this for solving a downstream task like category classification. And final reminder, uh, I invite you to go to this uh, repository, repository that we have prepared for you. Uh, we have built a um, toy example with Amazon Review US dataset. And this really can be used as a starting point for building your application. So if you have a similar problem in your, your uh, company or your uh, uh, project, you can use it freely. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much, Ricardo. So it's time for questions. And I will start from the most uh, unexpected, I think. So the question is, uh, Ricardo, do you speak Polish? If you do, does it help while developing language models for Allegro? If you don't, is it any problem? OK, so <laughs> it's, it's really unexpected. So yes, I speak Polish. Uh, I will say that um, from a really engineeristic point of view, it doesn't matter. I mean, I could do <laughs> this job for, I don't know, for an Arab company, <laughs> Arab e-commerce or Chinese, because uh, at the end of the day, it's really about uh, building um, something uh, that is uh, um, it's about understanding uh, uh, the machine learning pipeline. Obviously, uh, I could not validate uh, if the um, uh, translation, not the translation, sorry, but the if, for example, the uh, predicted token for Arab or Chinese is correct. I can barely do it in Polish. I mean, I can, if I do this check about uh, checking the token, uh, I will do it. Uh, but I will say that for building a language model, it's not really necessary to, to know the language uh, and how to speak it, in my opinion. But maybe there are some linguistics in, in the audience. Uh, I just said uh, uh, something really, really bad. <laughs> Okay, thank you. So the second question, does unsupervised pre-training on Allegro data improve uh, things a lot compared to generic data? Uh, why not directly using a pre-trained BERT model and then fine tune it on Allegro data? Okay, so uh, actually to answer this question, uh, if uh, uh, I have a really nice, uh, um, I have a, a ready answer uh, because uh, uh, we investigated basically this uh, this problem. So, um, what if we have a problem like uh, um, that is really specific of the uh, of the domain? Does it make sense to pre-train uh, the the language model on the specific uh, uh, domain? Um, oh, sorry, on on the domain specific data instead of uh, starting from the um, uh, the la a language model that was trained on the language proper uh, that is spoken maybe in that uh, in that e-commerce, for example. And we had a nice publication uh, about this. And I, I invite you, the, the person that uh, 
ask this question to read it because basically here we investigated this problem like it is better for example in the case of allegro to start from a standard polish language model or to uh, start from a polish language model but was that was uh, thoroughly trained also on domain specific data and the answer is it's better to um, go for domain specific data so that's why uh, we also wanted to share this with you today that it makes sense to fit something like a language model on, on something that maybe we don't consider a natural language, but it's an e-commerce language like uh, Allegro. So yes, it's, it really helps. Uh, if we go through the, the paper here, we can see the improvement. So uh, basically here we have three departments that we tried on. Uh, we have a, a simple baseline. Then this Herbert is basically a um, Polish language model trained on uh, corpora like uh, Wikipedia or other type of Polish uh, text. And uh, we can see that the improvement is huge in, um, this was not category classification. It's another uh, downstream task, but in general, we were seeing this, uh, uh, we are seeing this in all of the downstream tasks that we apply uh, our language model to. I hope I answered the question. I hope so. So we have more questions. Uh, another question is, if Allegro switched to using labels instead of categories, would it break all those models or would the softmax activation for last layer be enough for multi-classification? That's a really interesting question because um, this is actually a problem that we are dealing with because in general, even if you think about it as a standard uh, classification problem. In general, uh, Allegro has a lot of categories. So we are already in the regime of uh, extreme classification because I can tell you that we have several of, several thousands of uh, categories. So this is a first problem. Secondly, as you told, um, basically we have also the, a possible data drift problem because uh, the categories are built on a category three in Allegro as any other e-commerce. So, and it happens that uh, Periodically, these categories change. So we could even have a, like a problem of data drifting. So labels are changing. How to tackle these problems? Um, we, are, um, we are currently uh, researching how to do this. One uh, way to do is basically reframe the problem into a um, similar, similarity learning problem. So basically, you could uh, look for um, if we, if you remember this slide about the embedding space, we could say we can assume that uh, uh, offers titles uh, belong to the same category will fall uh, close in an embedding space. So basically, we could uh, say, okay, let's embed each offers title, and then let's run a nearest neighbor search, and let's assign uh, um, the best, uh, like the closest uh, category, the closest cluster of uh, um, offers as the category. This is a way to tackle the problem of uh, having a lot of categories. Um, yeah, but in general, uh, uh, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a difficult problem. Okay, I think we have uh, like two minutes for another question. So what's the next big uh, innovation in NLP field uh, to look forward in mm -hmm. your opinion? Well, well, uh, this is a <laughs> difficult question because uh, I know that uh, researchers in NLP are basically divided into uh, like people that say that these big models, uh, like language models, are basically falling into a kind of memorization. Like the biggest is the better, and uh, the biggest, mo the bigger model we will have, and the memorization will be higher, so we have more probability of. Uh, getting the right token and so building right representations. So this is one side of the community. And the other part of the community is actually uh, still working on such, con such concept, but trying to basically, for example, uh, uh, solve, the, solve the problem uh, uh, in a way that, for example, okay, let's have these uh, big models, but let's make them more efficient. Uh, um, there is a lot of, of going on, in my opinion, in the in in terms of, uh, for example, uh, mm, like uh, starting from this BERT framework, but making it lighter, 
and more suitable for um, also like a sust more sustainable training. So in my opinion, um, it's like, I think we are in a, the good direction because we have the computational capabilities of building such uh, big models. So it's okay that we uh, are going to train bigger models, but we need to do it uh, in a better way, more efficient way. Uh, and maybe along the way, uh, since uh, a lot of these uh, uh, algorithms basically try to um, cut some computations or do other things about uh, like making more efficient, maybe along the way we will uh, find out that basically we just we don't need the a big uh, dimension, uh, a big a lot of numbers, uh, a big number of um, parameters. But maybe uh, we will find something else. Like uh, there is another way of doing that same computation from another perspective, and we will have a better model. But I'm not a super NLP expert. Uh, this is my intuition. <laughs>